I'm tall and lanky like Gumby, and I and I wear like <laughs> tight <laughs> jeans, man. I'm not an opera singer. Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I'm your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in, downloading the episode. I really appreciate that. I also want to thank Charles for buying me a coffee at ChewingTheFatBR.com. That makes doing this so much easier in these late night edit sessions. Uh, I am really excited about this month. It's the musical month of December, the month of merriment. And so every episode, we're going to have a little music. And one of my favorite people and musicians in town I have sitting across me right now. Please welcome Tom Reed. Thank you. That was really nice. That was really sweet. I mean it. I mean it, man. I... Uh, Tom and I met uh, doing uh, Putnam County. Spelling Bee. I, I wore the shirt you thinking the, about it. Wore the cash shirt. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we we met at Putnam County Spelling Bee uh, with the Riverfront Theater Company mm-hmm. in North Augusta. Um, uh, you uh, you obviously had been playing and singing and things like that prior to that. I mostly did you know musical theater type stuff mm-hmm. you know as well. Yeah. As, working on radio stuff like that but uh it, you know it was such a cool experience first of all because that cast was stacked it was it was probably as perfect of a cast you could probably have gotten it was it was just really good it was just so much fun um and of course i mean it, it has a special place in my heart because that was one of those bucket list roles for me to be mm-hmm. uh barfay uh, so. i remember you saying that like the first day of read throughs, you're like, man, this is a role I really wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it was just one of those ones I felt like I could <laughs> relate to, you know? Well, you know, but, uh, um, but well, Tom, you, you were, you were Leaf Coney Bear in the production. Yeah. Yeah. That um, was a role I could very much identify with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you, if you're listening, you've never uh, listened to the soundtrack to Putnam 25th annual Putnam County spelling me, uh, I'll put a link in the show notes or whatever. So you, it won't be us singing, but, <laughs> but you can get an idea of the show It's great. It's great because we were all 20 plus year old people. Some of us into their forties and me uh, <laughs> playing. Uh, I mean, well, they weren't even high school kids. They were like middle school kids. Yeah. But it was so much fun. And of course, um, with Richard Justice directing. Oh my gosh, that was that may be the most powerful takeaway I have from that experience was yeah. just meeting Richard and being around him because I, I have never been. Well, that's not true. I have had encounters like that, but just having somebody who, the first time you interact with them, they just are like making you giggle, making you feel very warm and welcome. And also making you feel like, <laughs> I don't know the word to say, just like, <sighs> like not called out, but if he told you something, you were sort of like, Oh, well, I guess that's probably the right way to do it. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, I, I would say almost inadequate. You know, it, yeah, he he had a had a great way of guiding uh, his actors to the vision that he had, and to be able to, um, you know, get notes from Richard. Mm-hmm. You you know, you were getting notes that meant something. You know, it was always about you know maybe some nuance that you hadn't thought of mm-hmm. because you're just you know when you first start you're just reading words off a page you're trying to you know, find yourself in the character and all mm-hmm. and, and he just had a just a great way of pulling out character in mm-hmm. people gosh yeah uh history has a has a really really funny way of making you look back on things like that and go i knew in the moment that this was special and this would be something i would remember i didn't realize how special it would be. Yeah. 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 Especially looking back and, you know, we lost Richard last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, sometimes you have last moments with people that you never realize they were last yeah. moments. Oh my gosh. What a, yeah. What a way to say that. Um, there, uh, there have been a bunch of people, in Augusta that we've lost over the years Mm -hmm. who um, meant more to more people than I think the individual could ever really know. Right. And I, and I know that uh, many of the people 
there there are, there are people who know Richard and and others like him a lot better than I do. Um, but that doesn't take away <clears throat> like what he meant to me in those moments, mm-hmm. you know. And um, you know, that that is just like you said, you you never know when that last moment will be and it's a poetic thing to think about, but in the same time, it's a very um, human thing to think about. Cause like we, 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 we live and thrive off these interactions with people just on mm-hmm. a daily basis. And um, I, and I know that there are people that we cherish in the moment, but I think the overarching theme for people is that we never know how much we, are affected by someone until they are no longer able to affect us. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I have, yeah. A bunch of people have lost their parents have said that. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for my dad in that sort of respect. Cause I just try to spend as much time as I, with my dad as I can. Yeah. And, um, cause you never know, man, you yeah. just never know. I, I think it's one of those things where in life you just have to live every minute. Oh, yeah, that's hard though. You know, yeah. it is because there, you know things go on, and you 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 worried about you know paying a bill, or you've got a pain in your back, or whatever. You know, or somebody mm. cut you off while you're driving home, and they put you in this mood Oof. or whatever. You know, but stop reading, stop reading my thoughts, man. <laughs> <laughs> but still, just trying to be you know present in the moment, mm. enjoying whatever it is. That's the hardest thing about living. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, <laughs> that uh, I. Well, you know, like I, I just heard a, a commercial on the way over here. It may have been earlier today, but it was about these glasses or sunglasses that are able to like take photos. Right. Mm. And their, their pitch line or their tagline or whatever was like, you know, uh, watch be in be in the moment instead of like looking at it through a six inch screen. And I'm like, that's really smart. Mm hmm. You still don't need to take a photo of it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Because if you're truly in the moment, you're not. It's going to burn a memory. Yeah, that's you know. It's like in the office when Pam and Jim get married and they do the the little mm-hmm. like mental pictures. Yeah, and they keep doing that. Um, my girlfriend does that a lot, where she'll look at me because I will be doing something incredibly stupid, <laughs> and she'll just be like, "Click." Mm. I'm going to remember that. Some of those I wish he didn't, right. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean for us to get that, no, that no. deep all, all of the beginning. I was just trying to, you know, give this oh, we place where we where we met and where we kind of connected and all. Yeah. Um, Tom, take the take the stage. What what uh, what are you up to right now? What's well, going on? So I am. I'm about to start my last semester of college, nice. which is oh man, I can't tell you. Like Congratulations. I, I'm. The amount of money I have blown on this degree. <laughs> is this one of those you squeezed a four year degree into seven year kind of things? This this would be it, I'll be ending in 22. Uh-huh. And I'm I'm OK with saying this because I there's a point to be made here. Uh-huh. I started in 2010 and I'm finishing in 22. So okay. I stretched a four year degree into to 12. 12. Nice. <laughs> now. I will caveat that and say that I had five years where I was just working, not going to school, but I've now come back. I'm finishing my music degree and, um, yeah, people won't be able to tell me nothing in That's a few right. months, man. That's right. Are you going to like get one of those little ones and just carry it around like in a land? Oh uh, yeah, and be like, it's yeah, going to yeah. be it's going to be in my wallet. <laughs> like, hey, oh sorry, that's my degree. You know what people don't ever talk about is the titles you get when you get your degrees, right? Because it's bachelor's degree, master's degree, mm-hmm. doctorate degree, right? So you know, people are going to have to refer to me as Bachelor Reed. Yes, still doesn't sound as cool. I think they give you those names just so you go. No, I need to be a master at something. To, no, I need to be a doctor. I need so. to be a doctor. Yeah, yeah, just to keep moving you through. Yeah. But well, they, they never tell you that they pay you for that, though. Yeah, right. They right. never tell you that until you're already done. And they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, you could get these other degrees and we'll pay you for those. Wait, what? Wait, what? What? That's insane. What's So what's the degree going to be in? So my degree is a um, is a bachelor of arts degree in music with an emphasis in voice. Nice. Yes. A lot of people don't know that about me. I am a classically trained vocalist. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now what, 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 like classical, like, um, um it's, it, it is a, 
art form of singing mm -hmm. called bel canto, which is oh. Italian for beautiful singing. Oh, um, that's what I'm. I am trained in. I keep hitting the stupid. Thing. It's the one thing I told him not to do. It's I like have really just, long arms. He's very emphatic I, with his hands. I talk with, yeah. with his hands. So. so you, you all are getting the little bitty quip clue that I'm talking with my <laughs> hands. Here, I'm just gonna sit on him. No, no, don't sit on your hands. Um, your hands. But ahead. um, so I'm. It, it's. I tell them, I teach this same sort of thing to to beginners and intermediates, and what I tell them is. Really, the style of singing that this is is all about um, purity of sound, um, breath support, being able to control that, and uh, what I like to think of as longevity. Yeah. So, you know, I teach my students that um, when when we learn to sing a certain way, it's not to sound a certain way or to do something. It's for us to feel what is right in our bodies and in our voice mm. and um, set ourselves up so that in 20, 30, 40 years, you're still able to sing and have a really, really fun time doing it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Cause a lot of people just sort of grip it and rip it, you know yeah. what I mean? And that works for a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, until it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, that's not a diss on anybody because I know professionals that do that and they're great. Mm -hmm. um, this is just what I, what I've got a degree in and it's really, really fulfilling. I think. Um, really cool. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's setting me up to do a lot of cool things because I like want to get into voice acting and that's a great degree for that mm -hmm. to have like on my resume and stuff and all kinds of, all kinds of really cool stuff you can do with it. It's just, you know, yeah, to get some lessons from you or something, man. Hey, I can, I, I can actually do it. Awesome. <laughs> I just, I just finished my last jury exam on Monday, and that was, that was the last uh, voice exam class anything that I'll have to do in my in my bachelor degree, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's really fun. I feel like I know something, but I don't. <laughs> If I if people put me on the spot a lot of times, I'm like, um, I'm not sure, but hang on, I gotta think about them. Let me look it up real fast. Like, I got, I, I got a book for this. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, that is really cool because see, I think me, I can't speak for everybody, but like when somebody says, "Well, they're classically trained." you know, mm -hmm. voice person, I, my mind goes straight to opera. Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah. Oh, well, if you say classical training, I want you to sing something in Italian at my face right now. You yeah, know sure. I mean? Um, but that's cool to know that that's not necessarily what that means. It right. It may allow you to sing opera. Ex that's that right. There is the point that I try to tell people Yeah, doing this does not dictate what you can do it or it doesn't dictate what you will do. It dictates what you can do. Right. That's, that's really cool. Um, because I mean, and I have a lot of, lots of singers. I have 10 year old singers and I have 20 year old singers and I've had 30 year old singers. And every single time I like start talking about it, they always have reservations because they have the same sort of thought. They're like, I don't really want to be an opera singer. That's not really what I want to be. And I go, look at me. Right. Do I look like an opera singer to you? <laughs> right. I'm not, man. Um, I'm tall and lanky like Gumby and I and I wear like <laughs> tight <laughs> jeans, man. I don't look, <laughs> I'm not an opera singer. Um, but every student that I have, I feel like has been able to unlock a different level that they hadn't been able to before. And that is truly the best part of it. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That cool. it really is. And it's not, it's not a brag at me cause they do the work. They do right. it. It's the only takeaway that I have that I want that I would brag about is that I get to be there when it happens Yeah, and I get to see that. And yeah. that I tell people all the time, like that is the best part of this job. Yeah. It's like when, cause I mean, if you think, if you ask any person and I'm talking anybody in the Western world, Eastern world in the, I would say in the modern sort of world, like first world sort of countries. If you ask anybody like, Hey, who's an artist you like, man, everybody can think of something. What's a song you like? Mm -hmm. Bam. What's a song that's affected you? What songs made you cry? Something like that. Everybody can think of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, there is something so magical about hearing music, experiencing music, 
uh, for a long time. And then one day realizing that that sort of ethereal air like thing that you experience, you can grab it yeah. and recreate it and do it yourself. And that is, whew, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And you know, you get to have cool moments with it, but it's, that nothing beats that initial moment of, Oh, Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the cool part. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so, cool. so, I mean, so other than getting your degree, what else, what, oh, else, what else you got so going on? I'm getting my degree. I'm, I'm playing a lot of music but just by myself around town. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also playing with the bodega cats. They're awesome. Shout out, shout out kitty cats. What's mm-hmm. going on? Um, and, uh, in t- February, uh, I'm doing another production with the players, which is, I'm really excited about. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'll be playing, um, guitar one for the pit for something rotten. Oh, very cool. Oh man. That show is so flipping funny. It is hilarious. It's probably one of my favorite shows. Um, I didn't, I didn't audition for it though. I know it was coming around. I didn't audition for it. That was just, uh, well, I was going to audition for it. Yeah. I, I was like, man, that would be a pretty funny show. Cause mm-hmm. I, I've had this acting bug for years and years and years and I've not had the time, but I'll, I can, I'll be in the pit because I don't know how many people are familiar with like the theater sort of schedule, but if you're in the show, the day you're cast from that point forward, you, you pretty much have rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. You have music rehearsals or, or blocking rehearsals or something to that effect. Um, but for the pit, it's a lot different because I, let's say I'll get the music into December. I'll have all the way, I'll have six or seven weeks where they don't need me. Yeah. Right. And, and then I'll show up for the week before and we'll go through all the music and stuff. And that's a lot easier and that's a lot less pressure. Yeah. Um, and, but I, I wanted to do this and then they reached out to me about being in the pit and I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's sort of like my like dream in life is I, I have always wanted to be in a pit. I've just never played a classical instrument, mm-hmm. which is the funny thing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I mean, and, and the music and something right now, I mean, it's got electric guitars and things yeah. like that, which is funny because it's set during Shakespearean time and you've got all this, you know, thrashing songs, you know, you oh, know yeah. power and things like that. Um, well, I, I, I go on, I mean, just like if you were researching for like a role, you'd probably go on YouTube and like, look up like, Hey, this guy's playing this role. Mm-hmm. I can hear him sing the song or this person's doing it, whatever. Um, there's, the same exact things for pit people. Like oh, wow. you can, I watched one this week of a guy just going through his entire rig for something rotten mm-hmm. where he's like showing the guitars he has and the effects he has. And it's all professional Broadway stuff and it's just insane, mm-hmm. but it gives you a great idea for, for what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm like, I want to turn people onto the idea that theater is, not just the people that you see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're at all close to it, you know that cause mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who love being on stage who help with tech and stuff. And, mm-hmm. um, it's very underappreciated, man. There's a lot that goes into it. And, mm-hmm. um, I, yeah. I remember, uh, I want to say, I want to say I did like a backstage tour, um, of it may have been wicked. Um, and, and they were one at the time when they were in like in Charlotte or something. Oof. And, uh, one of my favorite parts to see is the pit and the, and the conductor and all that stuff. But what was cool was, uh, in that they were like, yeah, the guitar player and the drummer are the only ones that actually travel with the tour. Mm. The other 18 people, they all hire local. What? I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. How cool would that be to be in your town? And they're like, hey, we want to hire, of course, you know, Broadway shows that do tours. Yeah. Say, hey, we're going to do three weeks, you know, at this theater. Would we, Can we send you some music? We hire you to come. Oh, play? that's sick. Right. Yeah. How cool is that? It's like, so that way you're not having to deal with the rigors of the road and doing all that. But you get that three week just like, you know, oh, yeah. injection. Man, it, 
when when my girlfriend hears that, she's going to be like, Tom, why couldn't why can't you just do that? Why can't you do that? <laughs> well, unfortunately, we don't get a whole lot of shows that come here for three for a three week right. engagement. We get yeah. like rehearsal shows that do one night and, and that's it. And they're that, gone. That's yeah. it and they're gone. You well, know? didn't there was somebody I this is a tangent and it's I apologize, but there was there was a band who did their world tour practice run at the bell like a month ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you, did you remember who that was? Mm -hmm. Like, Uh, I don't remember who it was, but I, I remember it being a name that was like, Oh wow. Why are they here? Yeah. Like Like, if it, like it was a Beyonce or somebody. I want to say it was Rihanna, but I'm I'm like, I I feel like that's not right. So somebody will check me and be like, yeah, just this, this, this this guy doesn't know anything. That's okay. If you you know who it is, just, you can just go to my, but that's exactly what you're talking about. They come in, they, the tech people come in like a day or two before set everything up. The talent comes in one day, they run the show top to bottom, probably twice Mm -hmm. and they fly out. Yep. And they're done. Yeah. Cause it's probably, it's probably just significantly cheaper to, <laughs> to rent out the bell or, the, or yeah. the civic center and, you know, the James Brown arena or whatever and, and do their show. And then, like I said, be done. And, you know, sometimes they will, they'll sell tickets to that or whatever. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, Cause you know, you know how it is being on stage, you draw energy from your audience, even, mm-hmm. even if you're in, you know, a major, you know, rock show or, oh, or yeah. whatever <clears throat> you you still can only see the front two rows. That's what anybody can only see. Oh yeah. The front two rows. But, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you could still feel that energy coming off the audience as you're up on stage performing. So well, I think it's, I think it's really cool that some of those things are coming to Augusta. Mm-hmm. I've noticed in the last, like five years that it, it seems to me now my, my, you know, view may be a little skewed, but it seems to me like uh, there's just more and more, Cause we've, I feel like we've had a pretty steady, like country, like lineup that comes through oh, like Augusta. country artists. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we've gotten a lot of different kinds of artists come through recently mm-hmm. and I am just loving it. Yeah. Loving it. Um, like the Billy strings is doing two nights at the bell mm. and I've never, I have in my life not heard of a single artist doing two back to back nights in Augusta. In Augusta. Right. Like never. Said, we that. usually get those one offs. We get that one show and they're gone. Well, they may come it. back like the Avert brothers are right. huge and they'll come back every once in a while. But like Billy strings is ginormous right now. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I have so many people who are like, Oh man, we're going for both nights. And I'm like, do it, man. Do it. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Like, I, I, again, I can't think of a show that's done that. Yeah. But yeah, um, Augusta is Augusta is a good place, man. Yeah. I think you know, a lot of cool things are coming. Now, were you born and raised in Augusta? I would. Well, I consider myself this my hometown because I've been, lived here for twelve years. Mm-hmm. I was originally from Lincoln County, uh, mm. Lincolnton, Georgia. Okay. Which is, uh, if. If anybody wants to know how to get to Lincolnton, you get on Washington Road, head north until it stops. Yeah. And that's it. That's that's then you're in Lincoln. You'll you'll be right next to a huddle house. Nice. <laughs> and, and yeah, man, no french fries or no no hash browns, <laughs> only right. french fries. Hash browns, only french fries, for sure. Yeah. Um Lincoln County is um it's not the place that you would expect musicians to come out of because it's very, very sports oriented. Mm. Um, but, um, any, any Lincoln County peeps who are listening to this shout out to you because you are a rare breed. Um, if you made it out of there and you are making art, it's to me, that's a win win. Yeah. Uh, not to, not to say that Lincoln isn't cool. Cause I'm definitely going back there cause it's, it's home, but, right. Right. um, it's it's cool to see it's cool to see people you grew up with making making like substantial contributions to um emotion and art. Yeah. Is, That's, there, is there somebody that comes to mind right off the um, top of your head? Well, I I'll say this. You she's a friend Ashley Rivera's from my hometown. Okay. I graduated 1 year after her and she's amazing. Nice. Absolutely. Um there's I know I I have some people I'm going to school with right now. I, I will say, because we share the same name, Thomas Folger, shout out to you, man. He's a cool cat. I've mm-hmm. done some productions with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's <laughs> the, the saying of it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, mm-hmm. rings 
more and more true the more I go backwards in my life. Yeah. Because it always comes back to like hometown. Yeah. Yeah. There's always somebody in hometown who believes when other people don't believe or yeah. kind of give you cool inspiration when you're not feeling it. And that's Augusta has that same feeling, but you know, Lincolnton is like, I, th- I think we have 3000 people in the whole town. Like it's yeah. very, very tiny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, came from there and moved to Augusta for college and have been here ever since, man. I've, yeah. I've seen it. I, I've heard a lot of people talk about how Augusta's on the up and up or, I'll hear people say like, oh, Augusta doesn't have much of nothing going on. And I'm like, bruh, compared to what I have seen is it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really, really cool. And, um, I'm, I'm really thankful for where I came from because it's given me just an awesome perspective in life. For sure. Yeah. 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 You know, I think uh, that's one of those things like being able to, I understand it's, it's Lincolnton. And, and you're talking about coming to Augusta, but being able to travel and get outside of where you're, you're the, you know, the quote unquote four walls of your hometown. Oh yeah. For, you know, even short periods of time really open up your mind to uh, the, the differences that there are in the world and the other things that are out there. That oh you man. Just aren't aware of, you know? Yeah. And, and this, and I think a lot of people sort of take that and roll with it and think, Oh and I, like they think of the two big like p- politics and religion, like those mm-hmm. two things change. And to be real, those things will change, but there are so many other aspects of your life that you just don't think about. Something mm-hmm. that I tell people is, I, and this is is it's very very weird, but it's very very specific. Like I, I'm a cisgender white dude coming from a very countrified town, mm-hmm. and. Like, I didn't really know, like, how racism worked because I didn't really encounter it too much where I came from. Hmm. And when I I remember getting to college and people were talking about how people addressed them and talked to them and treated them. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. (laughs) How is this a thing? And, you know, good and bad, your point of view gets changed. But I think there are some people who... And I'm not thinking of anybody specifically when I say this, but I think there are people who leave those four walls and go, oh, this is scary. I can't do this. Mm. They come back and they go, this is safe. I like this. And to be honest, I don't think anything is wrong with that. Mm-hmm. For per se, but I also think the opposite is true for a lot of people too. They, they leave and they go, all of this was here. Right. And then they're like, well, I never want to go back there. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I find myself right smack dab in the middle of that. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, I think you have to have a balance just like with anything in life. Oh yeah. Figuring out that balance, being able to, you know, being able to take the good things from your travels, being able to take the good things from your home to, oh, yeah. to, to be able to understand and grow your perspective on mm-hmm. things, because then that puts you in such a unique place to be able to speak to this group of people that from the small town, but also this group of people from a different town or a oh, larger yeah. town or people that traveled, things like that. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I think that makes you so much better as a person, as a whole, you yeah. become a more whole person <clears throat> because there is uh, you know, as creatures, as we go through life, you know, we're always evolving, always changing. Every interaction has some sort of effect on you. Yeah. And being able to decipher and again, push, put away the bad things mm-hmm. and take on the good things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, and, and to be able to refine who you are as a person oh, yeah. through that, through that stuff, through that lens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's something that my dad actually told me when I was really young. And I remember it because when he told it to me, it sounded so flipping easy. Right. Yeah. Right. So is, um, is mom and dad, they still in Lincolnton? Yep. They're still in Lincolnton. Uh, any plans for like the holidays and stuff like that? Um, so we typically do Thanksgiving with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, and my family is not super big on holidays. Okay. Um, so we typically like I I don't think I have opened presents on Christmas Day since I was like ten. Oh wow! Yeah. Um. So we our tradition is to always open presents on Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll head up there for Christmas Eve, do Christmas with my family, 
uh, and then we'll uh, be driving to Rock Hill to be with Kristen's family okay. on, uh, I guess that's Saturday. And then on Sunday, um, I get to go to a Falcons game. So that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I have a, I'll have about six or 700 miles of driving Wow, <laughs> in three days, wow. which will be fun. That's, so, I mean, so any other, like, do you have a big family? Is it, do you come from a big family? Um, I no, I only have one brother, um, and the, the parents and, uh, my, one side of my grandparents has passed away. The other side is still with us and, and just kicking, man. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we'll get to we'll get to see them. But we don't again, we're not super big on holidays because because my family lives so close. I see them like once a week. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, my um, like girlfriend's family, they're like ginormous. It's a very, very large family. And um, uh, yeah, it's. I would say hers is bigger than mine, but mine uh, just, is just a little less involved. Probably is the best way to say <laughs> less involved. Yeah, you know, we just we just kind of show up, and it's 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 whatever. But when we go for her family, it's like we have to be here at this time, here at this time. Ooh. We do lunch here. We got to hit this and this, and then we have dinner. Oh wow! So it's like a whole whole day. Mine's like, hey, we're meeting for lunch, <laughs> and then whatever happens, happens. Yeah, no, it's it's very. We're regimented in the sense of, hey, we're eating at noon, noon thirty, by two thirty, we're all we're all asleep, oh. <laughs> just taking naps. Everybody pass out. The, the itis has hit everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, any, any other like holiday traditions, any, I mean, now that you've kind of got your, you know, you got your own little family, you got, yeah. you got a little, your own little traditions or anything uh, for you guys? Um, not currently. Now I will say we had the discussion earlier this week. In fact, I was told verbatim that we will have a Christmas tree in our home because okay. I don't have one now. Cause I live in a very small little cottage mm-hmm. and my girlfriend's always like, we should get a Christmas tree. And I go, I don't want a Christmas tree. <laughs> it's so much work. And she's like, that's fine. But I want you to know. <laughs> right. We're going to have a Christmas tree. <laughs> there will be Christmas trees in your future. It will be jolly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, maybe get uh, get one, get like a little live tree and put it on the front porch or something. Oh, yeah. Throw some lights on it. That way you don't have to have it inside and you can, you know. Oh, man. I I'm waiting to see a friend of mine. Who's selling trees? I was. I'm. I just want the confirmation he's selling trees. I'm going to go over there and I'm okay. just going to be like, "Hey, give me the top of a tree, just the top." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll just do Charlie Brown tree, man. Okay, just easy, easy peasy. I mean, that's you know, that's a fest. That's a that's a you know, that's oh, a tradition in and of itself. I will say we do have a tradition. I just thought about it. Um, so we have been like hardcore trying to watch a Christmas movie a day. Oh, wow. Okay. So, but the thing is, is I'm just kind of not into like the kid, my, my childhood movies. Like I want to watch something with a little more, maybe just more narrative or just something. Mm -hmm. And I just watched this movie and I want to tell you about it. And I'll tell everybody about it. It's a, it's a Mel Gibson film called fat Fat man. Man. (laughs) It's so funny. Yeah. Just imagine a super strong, super, super strong Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's this movie. Yeah. And he's, and he's pissed. Yeah. Just a, <laughs> just a angry, upset, super strong Santa Claus. Is it a little campy? hundred percent. Oh yeah. Is it still awesome? hundred <laughs> percent. That's too funny. There's that one. And there's another one. It was I remember the genre was horror Christmas and mm. I can, Oh, it was Krampus. That Krampus. was it. Yeah. yeah. Cause Adam, Adam Scott's in that movie and we we couldn't stop calling him Ben mm-hmm. <laughs> from mm-hmm. parks and rec. Yeah. And, um, we're just like, I have this habit of putting on a movie and not telling Kristen what the movie is. Mm-hmm. So she has no way to like <laughs> have preconceived. Exp- yeah. So we start Krampus and she's watching it and she's like, what is this movie? (laughs) And I'm like, just wait, just, she's like, these kids are terrible. (laughs) And I'm like, just wait. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, yeah. But halfway through that movie, she's like, wow, those kids (laughs) got terribly 
injured. Yes, <laughs> yes they did. Yes, they did. Um, yeah, so that's that's what we're cooking up right now. Well, I mean, with your with your music degree and all like that, is is music uh, a, a thing around the Reed house? Oh man, the holidays. So yes and no. I'm very particular about my Christmas music because um, if I'm going to listen to Christmas music, it has to be like. I know I said I don't like the child, my childhood movies. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to songs, it's like there's a playlist that I remember as a kid that is the Christmas playlist. Like if I hear these songs, I'm like, oh, man, I'm in the Augusta Mall. Santa Claus is up there and he looks fat. (laughs) Man, I'm ready. (laughs) Um, And yeah, I think... Nat King Cole does it for me. Like okay. any, any, just, just hearing him say, just hearing him talk is just like, oh man, it's Christmas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the, the meme right now is Mariah Carey or, and Michael Buble, right? right? right. Um, they're coming out of their winter hibernation a mm-hmm. couple of weeks ago. But there's like, you, when you hear Nat King Cole's voice, well, hello everyone. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, <laughs> Man, it's Christmas time, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm about to I'm about to crank some Nat King Cole on the way home. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, you did bring your guitar with you. I'm not saying you gotta play any Nat, uh, but uh music is a part of the show uh for for, for December here. Um give you a little opportunity to uh to play a little something, maybe a little original something, whatever whatever's on your whatever you're feeling on your heart tonight. <laughs> Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just want you to <laughs> play from your soul. Um, I, see, this is, I've been thinking about this through this entire conversation, and I'm like, man, what am I going to sing? I, I didn't think about that until you were like, oh, dude, bring your guitar. And I was like, oh, man. Oh, man. If only I had a degree in music. If only I had a degree. Ask me man. next year. Ask me in 2022. I'll have my degree then. You would think, man, you would really think that whenever someone says, hey, man, play, play us a song, I would go, cool, absolutely. Really cool. Here you go. And every time, this it's, it, this is what people don't know, man. And I feel like I'm, I'm peeking out because I'm angry. <laughs> but <laughs> musicians don't have songs they don't think in music. <laughs> they think in words just like you. Uh, we can cut that part, right? I got a little too triggered. No, you We can cut that. No, that's staying in. Um, uh, so, oh, man. Dude, I cannot think of a song for the life of me right now. And that is... Do you know Mary had a little lamb? We'll go with anything at this point right now. <laughs> And the tape is just burning. I'm just, I just need a song for the show. Oh man, I want to do Christmas, man, Christmas. I want to do a Christmas song, but I'm trying to think. City stoplights. See the stoplights blink a bright red and green. All the children rush home with the treasure. See the snow boom. See, I can't remember the words. I should have got my thing. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this in, as an instrumental. Okay, I can do that. You ready? Do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel at this point that like people that you've already booked to play at their places. <laughs> they're like, who is this guy? They're gonna be like, um, um man. the Tom Reed that was on that podcast? And you're like, no, that was No, one. no, that was the politician. That was the other one. <laughs> that was the other one. Oh man, see this is I don't want to ruin your, your career as a musician because I know that <laughs> No, I think I, I think important. I'm doing a mighty fine job myself <laughs> of that. I know that money's important. <laughs> let's you. um uh, let's dog we can do something. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, 
You would even say it glows All of the other reindeer Used to laugh and call him names They never let poor Rudolph Join in any reindeer games Then one foggy Christmas Eve Santa came to say Rudolph with your nose so bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight Then all the reindeer loved him Then they shouted out with glee Wee! Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll go down in his story Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, now won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Merry Christmas, everybody. I just want everyone to know, I could very much play any song. I was trying to think of a Christmas-specific song. You didn't have to think of a Christmas-specific song, though. Literally. Like, play anything. It's the holiday season, Rob. Let me be jolly, okay? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> All right, Tom, this is the second segment of the show where we like to dive a little bit deeper into, you know, mental health. And um, the question I always ask everyone is, how do you keep the dark at bay? You, you, you're going to take in information all the time. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to discern, just like you said, between what is valuable and what's not valuable. Now, the thing that's hard, I think that part that I just described is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Saying this has value to me, this does not have value to me. Mm -hmm. I think the hard part that a lot of people, myself definitely included in this, is we do not focus on the hand that holds what's good for us. We focus on the hand that this is not good for me. And we try to reason with ourselves or make an excuse to, well, that could be good for me mm -hmm. or that might work out, you know, right. we give ourselves ifs or whatever. And mm -hmm. that is the hard part. I think that's when we often get drug into um, just the darker times in our lives is when we are able to differentiate between what we need and what we don't need. But we get so focused on, well, if I do this, what will so-and-so think? How are people going to look at me? How are people going to look at us? Mm -hmm. You know, all sorts of things like that. And that that's a slippery slope for me personally, because as soon as I start to think of what, what is not going good, I will obsess over what's not going good. Mm -hmm. I, I have a very obsessive personality just in general. I'm not very compulsive, even though my girlfriend would, <laughs> probably say otherwise, but I am very, very obsessive. Whenever mm -hmm. I have something to do, I, I will focus on it until I can't think of anything else. Right. right? right. Um, I just, like I said, I have a hard time sort of focusing on where I might not have done what I wanted to do, or I may have said something that I, I really regretted after the fact. And instead of looking at a situation and saying, well, you did what you did or whatever, and it, it, you can't change it. So you either have to say, well, I can take this experience and be a better person going forward, or I can sit here and tell myself how bad I messed up and how, mm. uh, how stupid I am and how, you know, any regular quote unquote normal person would have would have seen that come in and would have acted differently or done whatever. Mm -hmm. I will focus on that mm. all day and all night. Yeah. Um, like I will, I will bring up in conversation sometimes um, to my girlfriend, like, Oh, do you remember so-and-so, so-and-so and the conversation we had with them? And she'll be like, yeah, that was, that was like months ago. And I'll go, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. 
or I probably could have done, I probably could have been better receptive to that. And she was like, why are you thinking of that now? Right. And I, I don't know, but that's sort of the personality I have. And yeah, I think it's one of those things and because I can get that because it's those things that they kind of are sticky. They're like tar. They stick in your brain and they, mm. they, you know, um, being able to let go of those things is the difficult part yeah. in some of that stuff because then you do, you're like, Oh, well, if I, you know, you know, and, and then you start overthinking and you start wanting to go back and it's like, Oh, well, do I say to them and tell them, Oh, did I, I, I didn't really mean it this way a minute, but yet you still can't, you know, get mm-hmm. the words out exactly right. And, and, and you, you know, and depending on what it was, you, you can't, you know, you can't get the toothpaste back in the tube once it's been squeezed. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's 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 that weird place where you got to find where you can where you can let that stuff go and and mm. realize that. Um, it, it, and I hate the phrase "it is what it is," uh-huh. but <laughs> yeah. at some sometimes it literally it is what it is. You may know your heart and what you said and what you meant. If they took it some other way, Mm -hmm. it's, they can either have the discussion with you to Mm -hmm. say, why did you say this? And then you can, you know, try try and clarify or, or if they don't and they take it the wrong way or something, Mm -hmm. that's, that's their reaction to what happened, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's not always on you to try and fix or, or or predict how they're taking something. Yeah. Because sometimes we worry about things that someone may have taken the wrong way that they actually never did, but we never realized mm. it. Well, see, you, you touched on like a couple of things that I think are really powerful. One, you can't control how someone reacts to something. That's just... That's the first rule in stand up comedy. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't you can't make somebody laugh. Right. But you also you physically can't make somebody mad. Somebody has to choose to 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 be offended or to be mad and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I will also say that I have never in my life had a situation where someone thought that they did something wrong by me came to me and said, Hey, I'm really sorry that I did this. I'm really sorry that I said this. And I just wanted you to know that I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never had someone come to me and say that and me be like, how dare you? Mm -hmm. I, cause I, I can't, I wouldn't be able to accept that phrase with anything other than grace, you know, like, like even if I didn't even realize it, like I would, Oh my goodness. I'm, no, you're fine. Everything's cool. Right, right, right. Um, like, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, no, it's good. Well, and that's, and I think that's the exact reaction that if you flip flopped it to where I'm the, you know, uh, offensive person, um, I think that's the reaction that most people would have if you, if you just have that, the guts to just walk up to them and say, Hey Rob, I'm a dumb, dumb head. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Cause you're probably going to be like, Tom, I have literally not thought about that. <laughs> right. Right. And that, and you know, and that's, that's the thing about, you know, communication, uh, you know, in, in connection with people, it's like, you know, I think everybody has some of that oh, yeah. within them. Everybody has, you know, common fears, common, you, you know, anxieties common. you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, if we're just a little, if we approach each other with a little bit more kindness, mm a little bit more optimism, a little bit more of a positivity that it's not always, you know, going to be the worst thing ever. If I talk to this person or if I, or if I try to have this conversation uh, and do it with humility, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm not trying to force my opinion or, or whatever I'm saying down your throat. I, this is just where I'm standing. And these is, this is my point oh, yeah. of view. Uh-huh. What's your point of view? You know what I mean? Oh, well that, that, that sort of, that sort of um, discussion conversation uh, is lost mm. right now because we were, before we started recording, we were talking a lot about social media and stuff. And we've gotten really, really used to the sort of, hey, someone has posted something. Man, I've just thought of a sick burn for that person. Tip, 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 tip send yeah burn mm-hmm. two hours later 
they reply. Yeah. That's that's how we have arguments now. Yeah. It's I'm going to jab, then I'm going to go back to my life, mm-hmm. worry about something else, then I'm going to get notified of it on my cellular device, mm-hmm. then I'm going to look at it, re- reignite all of that anger that I had earlier, type something else out to argue with you, and then put my phone away and and wait until the next response or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's 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 turned where to where you you don't have the resolution in a in a in a timely manner. You know. Oh man. Yeah. If you if you have a, re- you have a resolution. resolution. I mean, you know, when you when you're in a relationship with somebody and you have an argument, you guys have an argument. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it either ends in you know a a, a it's a positive or negative resolution, whatever that may be. Right. Whether it's you sleeping on the couch or, <laughs> or having to go, dr- you know, just take a drive to clear your head or, right. or you know, whatever that re- resolution is. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, but you're able to have it in a kind of timely manner. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they spill into the next day and sometimes things get held on to, to use against you in a, in a, <laughs> in a yet to be determined <laughs> argument. But, <laughs> But it's not the topic it's not, to be determined. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's not something that that necessarily is going to drag out for, you know, an entire day back and forth or something. Uh, and, yeah, I think it's that it's there's you can't he- read tone mm-hmm. in uh, a text mm-hmm. or, or, or printed word. You can't read the tone of someone. You can't gauge their inflection. You can't. Uh, see their facial features, their body language, all of those things that help to dictate what that meaning is behind what they're saying. You just, it's lost. Uh, yeah. I have rarely ever changed my viewpoint or opinion based on a Facebook conversation. <laughs> I, and I have a few times because I've been shown evidence where I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to buy that. Mm-hmm. However, I will say I have changed my mind or changed my opinion every single time. I've had a knockdown, drag out, honest to goodness conversation or a f- fight, if you want to call them that. Yeah. Like I have come to a resolution. I felt good about the resolution and I went to sleep peacefully. That's that does not happen on social media. No. I, I, I think it's, I think it's a lot of gotcha stuff and mm-hmm. relationships can't be like that. Per, like um, romantic loving relationships or just friendships. You can't have you can't have a friendship where you're waiting for someone to like, just burn you or, or, or you're just waiting to burn that person. That's, Mm -hmm. you're not being a friend, man. Yeah. You're you're being like a, I don't even know. I mean, like that's, that's, that's some, some elementary school stuff. That's so, you know, you're a child, you're being a child. And that, that kind of goes back to, to the, what's good for you and what's not good for you. Cause I think if, if people were real honest with themselves and real honest with their friends, sometimes um, me and my girlfriend have talked about this. There are people that we consider friends and we hang out with all the time mm-hmm. who, as soon as they're not around you, they like don't care. They're yeah. going to go do whatever they want to do. And mm-hmm. that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do not need those people. Listen to this people. You do not need those people <laughs> in your life. Um, the, the, the best friends that I have are the friends that at 1230 in the morning, I can call them and they're going to look at the phone and go, what in the world? Hey man, what do you want? You know, like that's, that's my dad. That's my brother. That's my best friend, Ryan. Like those, those are the people that you have to have. Yeah. And those are the people you can trust and you can, um, those are the people that help you grow. Mm hmm. I'm not saying not to have acquaintances or whatever, but when you have, when you have a real true friend, um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's really, really, when you have someone to, to talk to, cause you can, I think people would probably hear that and go, Oh, well that's my husband. That's my wife or something. Um, I love my girlfriend with all of my heart, but there's just sometimes, and she'll tell you this cause she has friends that she just, she has to talk to if something goes right or wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm the same way. Yeah. And, and she, it will be a scenario that I have no idea about. Yeah. Like, cause how I, the, 
knowing when you can help and knowing when you can't help is a great relationship tool. Oh yeah. And, um, we both know that really well. And, yeah. and that's, and that's just part of it, man. I think the number one thing that getting back to, to like the sort of overall question of being in the darkness and how, how you just work in that sort of space or how to have a viable sort of life in that sort of space. Cause I know there's a lot of people that, sh- that struggle with it day out, day in, there's mm-hmm. no relief. Um, I think the biggest thing um, are the relationships that you have and the ones that you choose to, um, the ones that you choose to water and the ones that you choose to ignore. And I'm saying this and I know there are people out there who I'm very good friends with who have texted me and I have not texted them back <laughs> and that I'm just really bad at that. But I, I know, I know who to call when I'm in trouble and I know who, when they call, they're counting on me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when someone is counting on you, when you have a pet and they're counting on you, it changes the way you think about yourself. You know what I mean? And when you think, well, I need to, I need to be able to help them. You think, well, if I'm, if I'm going to do that, I need to be able to get up, get dressed, brush my teeth and all sorts of, just the re- your regular routine, right? Because um, I think I think a lot of people um, turn to faith, and they turn to um, whether good or bad. You know, they they have vices, whether that is their faith or whether it's you know something else. And the having something solid to land on, and having something to say, Hey, I am, I am lost. I don't know what to do. I am stressed. I have anxiety. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that scares the ever loving hell out of me. Having someone to call and tell that to whether or not they have an answer. Cause I can tell you right now, when people call me with that sort of thing, I don't have an answer most of the time. I may fake it, but I don't know because I'm not in their shoes, right? But having having the relationship with somebody that you can count on them is the best thing I think you could ever have. Because um, there, I mean, there's definitely been friends that I'm not even close with right now. Like we talked about Caleb earlier. Caleb helped me through a really hard time because he was just a friend, you know? And it's really hard to find people who may not even be looking for, you know, anything in return. They're just like, Hey, you look like you just need someone to talk to. And that's, that has helped me through more things than anything else. Also men cry. Just go ahead. Just do it, man. Nobody's watching. And if they are, who cares? Everybody's an ugly crier. (laughs) Name one crier who's good looking, who's who looks good when they cry, because I can't think of it. I feel like I look like Kim Kardashian when I cry. <laughs> no, but having having those relationships and being able to to tell yourself that it's okay to relieve some pressure by crying, two biggest things is that have always helped me in my life. Also, have a feel good playlist. Those are the. Those are my three Mm -hmm. feel good playlist. Let your cries out, gentlemen. And I say that women, you also need to cry and that's okay. Men, let them cry. Mm -hmm. Women, let the man cry. It's okay. They'll be fun. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big thing for me. Let the men be little spoon. Let the men cry (laughs) and don't say nothing about it. All right, Tom, this is the third segment of the show. Ooh, this is the part I've been waiting for. Oh, is it? It's time now for the Fast Five. Fast Fast Five. Fast Five. It's the Fast Five. Fast Five. 
Sorry, I don't have a theme song or anything like oh, that. Oh, no, that was really good. Yeah. Don't. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. <laughs> a theme song. Yes. <laughs> no, it's a Fast Five powered by Poddex. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. Uh, it, it's created for podcasters, but it's great conversation starters. Uh, they've got physical decks. They've got an app. Um, and it's like over 4,000 you know, conversation starters, uh, different type of categories and stuff like that. So if you if you want to get some uh, some things to help help you, you know, have a conversation with folks, have just have a meeting at work, and you want to have an icebreaker, check out Poddex. As a matter of fact, if you go to chewingthefatbr.com dot com slash Poddex, use the promo code Chew, you can get ten percent off your decks. Nice. Yes, but here we go. It's going to be five questions. First thing that comes off the top of your head, no pressure, no wrong answers, okay? I'm just going to hit the randomizer here, and here's question number one. Oh, that was nice. Burger or hot dog? Ooh, hot dog. All right, why? Um, so I saw a thing on History Channel about, or maybe Food Network, about how ketchup doesn't belong on hot dogs. Mm. Yeah. Um and that changed my life. Really? So hot dog, mustard. I prefer sauerkraut, but uh, chili, mustard, it's also good. A little onion. Mm-hmm, Can't mm-hmm. beat it, man. Yeah, I'm a big, big fan of like a, a chili slaw dog. Oh, yeah. Like oh, Carolina, oh yeah. Chili slaw dog. Yeah. Good old slaw dog. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. It's a good one. All right. Question number two. I love it. Would you rather have Morgan Freeman narrate your life out loud for everyone to hear? Yes. Or, or have or have a theme song played whenever you walk? Ooh. Does it say what the theme song is? No, no, just whatever. The, I, okay. You know, whatever the theme song is. Yeah. Oh, man. Ooh, that one's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, if Tom was thinking. If Tom was thinking, he would be thinking he would like the bare naked ladies to write a theme song about him. <laughs> to have play every time he w- Yeah, I think I would I think I would pick a theme song by the bare naked ladies. Because yeah. they, they got some good ones. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big big bare naked ladies fan. Most people are. Yeah, that's a really good one. <laughs> so the, I mean so like the theme song is like you think it's just going to be like when you're walking or, or would you want like no matter what it fits the mood. So it's almost like a film score. That's what I'm, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah. So that's what I would go for because I would be a little, I would be a little upset if Morgan Freeman was like, he was thinking about telling them about the snot running down their nose, <laughs> but he did not, <laughs> you know, yeah. That's a really good Morgan Freeman, by the way. I mean, it's, oh, thank uh, you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. If I've, I've had the theme song thing. I feel like I'd be trying to like trick him. So I'd be like, it's like creeping up on stuff, <laughs> like <laughs> trying to, try, try to get it all suspenseful and stuff like that, and then be like, <laughs> you know, like breaking the tap dance funny. or something. <laughs> That's too funny because that. Well, that that assumes that there is someone in real time watching your life like the Truman show going like um, a Foley actor yeah. just yeah. like yeah I've got, I've got like yeah, I've got like uh, Danny Elfman who's yeah. writing the, the score to my life <laughs> just whatever's happening that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> I love this sound <laughs> go for it where's it coming from do it no I want, I want, the, I want the sound where's yeah, the, the sound's coming this has got question number three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right what is your idea of relaxing um okay so i i have a two-part answer to this because i have i'm gonna i'm gonna divide this into what i would call everyday recreational relaxation <laughs> okay. and then vacation relaxation okay so i think my everyday recreational relaxation would be um sitting on my couch in my comfy pants and my my comfy sweatshirt mm-hmm either playing some sort of video game or watching a movie with just a bunch of chicken wings. Nice. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's relaxing to me, man. Yeah. Now vacation relaxing is very specific beach Mexican style lager. Don't care what it is. Mm, okay. Um, sun canopy, Rod Stewart singing the American song book in the background. Okay. And a good book. Nice. To be determined. Okay. 
Very good. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's relaxation right there. That sounds really relaxing. Both of those. Both of those sound good. <laughs> Question number four. <laughs> this ties into what you just said there. So, <laughs> <laughs> what was the last book you read? Oh. Now, you're, <laughs> you're in school. So I'm going to say, unless it's a really interesting textbook, let's not go with a textbook. Let's- no, 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 no. Well, I... <sighs> I'm in the process of reading Leo Fender's biography right now, written by his wife, but that's not the last one I finished. The last one I finished was actually um, Arthur Smith, I believe is his name, um, who wrote the screenplay for Space Oddity, Space Odyssey, Hmm. um, wrote a book called Space Odyssey 2001, or 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I finished that one a few months ago, and I haven't really picked anything up since. But that is a really, really... If you're a fan of the Kubrick film, mm-hmm. I very much would encourage you to read that book. It's very good. Very good. And what was the one you said you were reading now? Uh, the biography of Leo Fender, of Fender Guitars. Ah, okay. I'm writing, a, I'm writing my senior paper about him, doing my senior presentation about him. Very, very cool man. Cool. Hit me up if uh, if you want to know more about Leo Fender. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I, I, lo- I love like biographies and stuff like that. Uh, autobiographies have a different feel than biographies, you know? 100%. But, but yeah, I, I love reading about people like that. Mm-hmm. All right, and number five. As you get older, what do you realize your parents were right about when it comes to the future? Hmm. What were my parents right about when it came to the future? Like a piece of advice they gave you and you, and you were like, no, mom, that's dumb. You know, Mm. just wanted to buck the system. And now you're like, (laughs) I still want to buck the system. Um, No, I think I'm thinking about my dad and the, the amount of advice that my dad has given me is, I don't know if I could count it all. But what was he right about in the future? I don't know, man. That's a tough one. Um, he was right that the Falcons are just tr- a trash football team. <laughs> 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 uh, I go to my I go to my dad's house to watch a football game, and they played earlier in the week, and I didn't realize it. And I go, Dad, you're not gonna you don't have the game on, and he goes, No, nah, they already lost this week. <laughs> you gotta wait till next week to see it. But I think. On a serious note, my dad always told me that the amount of time that you spend with your family and with the people that you love is a like direct reflection of like what it is they mean to you. Mm. And it kind of goes back to things we were talking about earlier, but you know, we don't have a lot of time with people and spending as much time as you can with the people that you know you're going to miss. Like I've, I've tried not cussing this entire time, but putting all bullshit aside, all of it, you know that, you know, you're going to miss certain people if they died tomorrow or if they just disappeared, like you don't even get the closure of, you know? Right. And I think that's, my dad was really, really right about that in a, in a couple different instances, but yeah. Um, he also told me he got this from his parents, I'm sure, but the name that you're given came to you in a certain form in a, it had a certain value to it mm-hmm. that your grandparents and your parents put on it. And in the future, what that name means is totally dependent upon you, mm. you know? And, um, I've been fortunate enough to do cool things in my life. I've been fortunate enough to, to do well at things in my life and, um, make my parents proud and for good or for bad. My dad was very much right in that the things that we choose to do, do not reflect simply on us, but they reflect on the name that you inherited Mm. and um, yeah, do. And it's sort of the leave it better than you found it sort of thing, you know? Right. Um, 
and yeah, my dad's been right about that since <laughs> since way back when. Yeah, and I think about that a lot because even right now I'm thinking about you know my dad's gonna go. Nah, I had much better advice than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. That that, that was, was the, the thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you you're supposed to not press down your burgers when you're grilling them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, I value your name. The name Tom Reed means a lot to me as well do you. And that is our Fast 5. That's our show, buddy. Thanks you. Again, I am I am, am flattered that I was asked to do this and now on the back end of it this has been a wonderful conversation this is a great podcast and i think you help more people than you realize well i appreciate that buddy and i appreciate you being here if folks want to keep up with you how can they find you so uh if you want to follow me on facebook you can you can just look up tom reed um uh you can also uh, i i teach privately and if you would, are at all interested in music lessons, or I know that that was a, a, a long time for a song, but I promise I can teach it. <laughs> um, but if you're interested in that, you can go um, to Tom Reed School of Music on Facebook, or you can go to Tom Reed um, dot or Tom Reed dash music dot square dot site for booking information i will put all those links in the show notes so it'll make it a lot of people yeah, easier yeah, than, yeah 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 those don't necessarily fall off the tongue well, no, the, 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 but yeah I'll, i will definitely put those links uh in the show notes also you can find uh tom's bio on the website at chewingfatbr.com again tom thank you so much for being here my thank friend. you rob this was great if you would like to support this podcast i would appreciate it if you buy me a coffee for the holiday season at chewingthefatbr.com but until next time i look forward to the chance we have to sit a spell and chew the fat <laughs>